Hey everyone, I'm Ciro and I'm the lead for the evangelism team uh, in EMEA region at Unity. And this is the rest of the evangelism team. Hey, I'm Amel. Hi, I'm Shema. Hi, I'm Andre and I'm part of the online evangelism team here in Copenhagen. This week we got together to make a small game for two very simple reasons. The first one is that Global Game Jam is coming up and we wanted to warm up, we wanted to get in the mood, right, in the spirit. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing is that we got some really cool hardware that HTC sent to us, which is the Vive Pro Eye, which is a headset that has the ability to track the movement of the eyes. Most game jams, all they have like a, a theme for people to work towards because you have a small amount of time and we use that technology as a theme. So it was more of like a challenge instead of a theme itself. But it was very fun because none of us have ever used eye tracking before in Unity or in general. So it's pretty fun to start having crazy ideas regarding eye tracking and how could that really work in a functional game as that being the priority maybe. First day, what we did is that we tried the headset, we tried, uh, we did the installation, we did everything. Uh, what we did is that we uh, tried the plugin on Unity, uh, we looked at the limitation of the technology itself, what it did and what it didn't, and then after that we had brainstorming and we came with crazy ideas. So basically we decided to work on a, on a game based on hypnosis. This is, was really the first idea to work on, and then we tried to move forward with that idea. On the second day, for instance, we thought, okay, it could be good to hypnotize robots and get control over them. And every time you control them, you can actually do actions yourself using the headset and the Vive controllers. And these actions are also mirrored with the other uh, robots in front of you. And so this way, we can control them and move forward on the level. Basically, I think one of the key driving factors was that we we were trying to figure out a reason to use eye tracking versus uh, head movement, right? Yeah. yeah. So we were like, what can you do with the, the eyes that you cannot do with your head? And we figured out that the connection is actually the connection with the eyes of the other character. Um, so the idea that maybe you're moving your head, but you're still keeping track of the other character with your eyes and they're doing the same with you. And that really feels interesting. We did a few tests and we realized that you have these two uh, pivoting objects, one inside the other, the head and the eyes. And that was really interesting. And that's why we went for the hypnosis uh, game you. mechanic. Yeah, so the second challenge was to make the actions mirrored and not inverted. So it was a little bit tricky to say, okay, I'm moving my right hand, but I don't want the, the robot to move the right hand. I want to be the left, but doing exactly the thing I'm doing with the right one. So that was also a part that we tried yeah. to work on. And because you need to keep the, the eye contact, um, they have to look at you. So they don't mirror your head movement perfectly, but there's an offset. Uh, the other thing actually is that we had to think about the puzzles. Yes. And that was also tricky because, because we had to think about the room that we were in, not to bump on the walls or bump on other objects, uh, and think about a puzzle that we can do and we can achieve in a certain amount of time with all these limitations that we had. This robot that has a key on his head, which uh, leans a lot forward, uh, was really important for uh, driving the idea of you rotate your head, but you need to keep the eyes yeah. the other direction yeah. because your head is now the thing that's actually interacting with the environment. What we did during these uh, three days, actually, like what should be done in every Global Game Jam, is that we uh, shared the tasks between us. So each person had something to do at each time and we used Collab and Unity to uh, share uh, the project and work on it, uh, each one uh, on a different scene. ML took, I think, yeah. the rotation Yeah, the so head. I was working on the rotations and to be able to do work on virtual reality and test different features on different computers, we decided to use the Oculus Quest. Yeah. So uh, that is good because using the XR toolkit from Unity package, you can actually do the same code that will work with Vive or with, uh, Unity, uh, with the Oculus Quest. And this also was quite helpful because we were able to move forward fast and work on different features at the same time. Yeah. And obviously, as we were prototyping, we didn't have much time to make the graphics because none of us is really like a graphic artist. Uh, so we turned on to the asset store and we find pretty quickly, actually, uh, a very nice robot that uh, was working with what we wanted to achieve, like a 
having like a screen face and having these moving eyes that was perfect yeah. uh, and it was an asset from uh, the creator redhead robot uh, that we grabbed and it was coming with an environment so we, then we were quickly able to prototype the, the scene yeah. adding just a few primitives so we have used the universal render pipeline in unity which works very well with vr to enhance the performance and uh, I think you mentioned the shader graph, right? Yeah, actually we used the shader graph to make some effect for uh, the walls, the glasses, things like, like moving tiles and things like that. Yeah, and the uh, barriers, the lasers that yeah. Yeah. divide the space. Exactly, yeah. we dissolved the barriers. Uh, it was really great to, to use that feature uh, because uh, it helped us save time and have something that was really cool to look at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Don't hesitate to use the XR Interaction Toolkit of Unity if you are using VR. Uh, it's really easy to take in hand and maybe you can try that out before uh, doing the jam itself. You can also use the Universal Render Pipeline. Yeah, for to your squeeze that little bit extra yeah. performance. <laughs> yeah, because it's really, especially with VR, you really need to have good performance or also with mobile. So uh, it works yeah. very well. And uh, to be able to work together on the project, you can use Collab, which works really good and uh, it's really I would say it's safe way to work on your project yeah. without yeah. losing any data. So very for fast. non programmers. Yeah. Uh, it's very yeah. fast. Yeah. It's very fast. Yeah, yeah it's very yeah, fast. Cool. It helped us a lot. Yeah. And never forget that uh, game jams are all about having fun. So don't make them stressful. Uh, we try to keep it uh, on an healthy yeah. level. Uh, we had a lot of fun. And even though I would say the product, the final product was a bit rough around the edges, uh, we did have some fun and we managed to do what we were trying to do, which oh, was yeah. to try the technology uh, and to oh, get warmed up for the event that's coming up in a week or so. Anyways, of course, we mentioned a bunch of stuff. So tutorials, resources, packages and features we used in Unity. And if you're interested on in checking anything out, we're going to put links in the description for all of that. And of course, feel free if you have any questions about VR and setup, we're going to do our best job to try to reply them. And you know, yeah, so just leave a comment under yeah. the video yeah. and we're going to reply to any question that's about right. them. Yeah. About game jams. Yeah. yeah. So best have luck. fun, yeah. best of luck with your upcoming game jams from yeah. the Evangelism team in EMEA. Thank you. Yeah, bye bye. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye.